In today's video, we're going to be building a massive Lego prison. There will be extremely famous prisoners held there, being looked over by armed guards. However, a dastardly prison escape is being planned, involving tunneling, explosions, and guns. Be sure to stay to the end and subscribe for today's giveaway, and let's break out of LEGO City Prison. The LEGO City Bank has its lights turned off, and outside, civilians are held hostage as a bank robbery goes on. Notorious LEGO City war criminal Jeff yeah. Has robbed the bank alongside his partner in crime, Bob. Hostages tremble in fear. Oh no! Jeff and Bob load up their getaway vehicle and make a speedy exit. <sighs> Police arrive at the scene of the crime and there's no trace of Bob or Jeff. They have zero evidence of what went down here. Jeff and Bob think they're home free, counting up their money back at the crack shack. What? Unbeknownst to them, their roommates Walter and Jesse are about to get into huge trouble for their secret sauce. Jesse, we need to cook. Special Agent Asak Schrader of the Albuquerque Police Department Sussy Baka. has arrived with his SWAT team. Agents are preparing to breach the compound along with their canine unit. It's go time. FBI, open up! Walter and Jesse are quickly arrested by Hank Schrader. Don't lie to me, Walt! But they're not the only ones living in the building. Upstairs, SWAT team members find Jeff with the stolen money. He's promptly arrested. But while the fuzz was on to everyone else, Bob takes to the windowsill, managing to escape on foot. <laughs> Prisoners get loaded into the back of an armored van, and pretty much every unit has come out to witness them go in. The police are not risking an escape. Upon arrival at Lego City Prison, the police realize it hasn't been built yet. So let's use some taxpayer money and help them out. And there we have it, their new home now awaits them. The Lego City Prison. Let's check out their roommates. We've got Adolf Brickler, commander of the Third Reich. Little known fact. Oh, so dope, the mic. He's in here for some hard time after, well, World War II. After doing World War II, yeah, he that's a pretty bad crime. His neighbor is the Joker. I'm the Joker, baby. He's in the slammer for hitting Batman in the back of the head with an oversized hammer. Hey. But then it turned out to just be a guy named Greg in a Batman costume, and he got 25 years. And then there's Tony! Tony's in here for stealing the gabagool and other Italian mobster things. A cook of the pizza! Lucky for Jeff, he doesn't have to hang out in these single cells. He's up at the top with the general population. Other small time criminals sharing a cell. Now this is Warden Paul, and Paul is currently not satisfied with the security of the prison. So he's asked us to step in and make some improvements. First of all, we've built up underneath the prison and put it on top of a hill. This will make it so any guard snipers will have easier shots at the prisoners below. We've also given the prisoners some basic health care needs, hair care products, gym equipment, and some toilers. Wait, how, how did those guys get in there? Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. Here too much raining. <laughs> the warden could only fit the toilets in the middle of the yard, so there's not a lot of privacy. These healthcare provisions were provided because a healthy prisoner is a happy prisoner, and a happy prisoner is less likely to escape. But Tony was none too happy. So he wiggled his way out the top floor window, dropped into the courtyard below, and ran as fast as his little Italian legs could take him. Until the guard sniper lined up his sights and... That's when the warden decided maybe it was a good time to go ahead and invest in more security. So Warden Paul made a deal with an outside contractor and hired a bunch of guards with them with elite military training. He also went ahead and hired a prison architect to design security measures around the prison. Now the first thing the architect built was a watchtower here. Let's add some guards. I just spent like a minute trying to put a guard in here, and man, this thing is flimsy as heck. One earthquake and this thing is done. <laughs> Maybe we hired the wrong architect. There we go, a little perseverance and there's a guard actually standing in there. This time, the architect has worked a little bit harder and actually created some searchlights. He's got two of them. Lined up to observe the yard below, pointing out any potential escapees. But that's not all he's building. He's also got another searchlight. But this one is on the ground. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! 
I think the warden might be questioning his decision here. But let's see what else he's got up in his sleeves. It looks like our boy built roadblocks. <laughs> My boy, D do you think the prisoners are really gonna see this and go, oh, I better stop? We'll give you one last chance here. Amaze us with your last invention. A few moments later. He he built more roadblocks. The warden has some guards seize him and throw him in the prison. He is now incarcerated for his horrible architecture skills. He, he didn't really get a jury or anything like that, but we're just gonna ignore that. But the warden still got a job to do. So he assigns his proper military men to take up guard positions. Soldiers now line the top walls. As well as the exteriors, the entranceways, the guard houses, and the roadblocks below. Escape seems almost impossible, but the architect inside has an idea. He slips inside one of the very cells that he designed, and underneath the bed, there is a hole. He slips inside the hole with his makeshift hammer and begins to do what all children yearn for. Mine. The children yearn for the mines. But up top in general confinement, Jeff has alternative plans. You see, a few days ago, Bob visited and gave Jeff a piece of birthday sheet cake. The guards didn't suspect a thing. It was Jeff's birthday after all. I would like to greet you the happy birthday and I wish you the best of everything. But once inside, Jeff took a closer look at the cake. Inside of it was a small knife. Jeff now had one of the tools he needed to escape. He hid it betwixt his butt cheeks so the guards would never notice it was there. You see, this whole plan sprung into action a few days earlier when Bob was trying to connect to the house Wi-Fi. He realized only Jeff had the password. He'd need to spring him if he wanted to watch YouTube. Bob went and paid his old friend Agent 47 a visit. He offered the hitman a small sum of money, the last of the bank robbery earnings that hadn't been seized from the police, in order to help with the mission. Agent 47 agreed. Early the next morning, the plan was ready to spring into action. Upstairs, Jeff was picking the lock to the door. After a few seconds, the knife is successful, and he's able to wander the courtyard. It's early morning, so the guards are changing duty. Nobody notices this sleight of hand. Plus, others are still using the yard. It's just not Jeff's turn right now but he can easily blend in unnoticed. Temporary guards are put into place while the warden explains the daily duties to the new guards that are coming in. That means there's less enemies at the ready. Agent 47 just walks in and starts blasting. He silently disables the temporary guards and walks away. But the guard in the guard tower now notices that his fellow comrades are sleeping on the job. Hey! He's about to radio them in when... Bob drives his truck straight into the horribly built watchtower. Warden hears the commotion and sends his men to investigate, but Bob is already busy fitting rope to the back of his truck and onto the chain link fence. He simply drives the truck forward and the truck breaks. Bob quickly starts fixing the truck. Guards are already there, starting to fire at him, but scared to come out of cover because they see the dead bodies of their comrades. Inside, prisoners start beating up the guards, seeing this as an opportunity to riot. The isolation cells of Brickler and the Joker are opened. Jeff manages to take out a guard with his knife. The Joker quickly takes the bullets from the guard, improvising an explosive device that sticks to the fence. Bob is still under the thick of fire when suddenly, the fence is destroyed by the makeshift explosive. Jeff quickly grabs the back of the truck for dear life, and they take off, escaping the prison. The warden just barely misses them. But quickly after, the Joker arrives, and now the warden is backed into a corner. The two of them have their weapons drawn, but only one can walk away. Throughout all of this, the architect's tunnel collapses. He is now stuck within his own creation. This is why architecture school is so important, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff and Bob make it back to their compound, ready to steal again. They have really learned nothing from this entire adventure. Oh, well guys, thank you so much for watching this video of the Lego prison escape. A lot of destruction after building a pretty awesome prison, but let's get into the giveaway. We're going to be giving away two Daily Bricks mystery boxes, each of which include one common, one uncommon, and one rare minifigure, which is very, very likely to include some custom clone troopers that you might have seen in my last video. These mystery boxes are back in stock over on dailybricks.com if you wanna check them out, and I'll also be giving away two of them to you guys in this video. All you gotta do is hit the like button, subscribe with notifications turned on, and comment down below 
how you would plan to escape prison. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.